White House senior policy advisor Stephen Miller, a leading proponent of President Trump's anti-immigration agenda, is facing scathing criticism from one of his own family members. In an essay for Politico, Miller's uncle David Glosser calls his nephew an immigration hypocrite, arguing that their family of Jewish immigrants who fled violence from so-called pogroms in a small Eastern European village and were welcomed at Ellis Island in 1903 would have been turned away if Miller's policy had been in place at the time. Glosser writes, quote, I have watched with dismay and increasing horror as my nephew, who is an educated man and well aware of his heritage, has become the architect of immigration policies that repudiate the very foundation of our family's life in this country. David Glosser joins me now from New York City. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having interest in this important topic. I appreciate it. Well, immigration has been such a, a, an important political issue, but as someone whose grandparents came from that same little village, Antipol, that you write about in your essay, I feel this very strongly. Yes, and I understand. We're Lanzmann. Yeah. We are Lanzmann, indeed. Yeah. And um, the story of the arrival of our grandparents at Ellis Island and of the extended family later on, but that period around 1901 to 1906, 1907, there were horrendous attacks against Jews in, the, in that area, which isn't really well understood. It's an area that we always thought of as Russia, but I guess it's really Ukraine or other related countries as borders changed. Yes, borders changed. In those days, it was part of the Russian Empire, and it's uh, located in an area which is now part of the nation of Belarus. Antipol was a little tiny townlet. Well, I I'm wondering what, what motivated you to tell this story now? I've been interested in uh, the fate of uh, my, uh, my ancestors that didn't make it over for a long time. And I've been uh, posting on Facebook uh, my dissatisfactions with uh, the Trump uh, immigration policy and the treatment of refugees. Since my retirement from uh, as a practicing uh, clinical neuroscientist, I've engaged in a lot of volunteer work with uh, various immigrant aid associations, including HIAS, uh, Physicians for Human Rights, etc. And I've met a lot of these folks who are trying to get into the country, in particular those who have been victims of severe persecution, torture, abduction of their children, etc. Uh, what, is, um, what does your nephew not understand about what happens to children separated from parents? What happens to the children and what happens to the parents? I'm unable to speculate about what he understands and what he doesn't understand. Okay. The, uh, what would you I've, like people to know about the emotional, physical effects of this policy? Uh, you know, you really don't have to be a physician or a scientist or a psychologist to understand the consequences of separating children from their parents. Everybody knows this. In, uh, prior to World War II, in the early stages of World War II, Britain had to make terrible decisions with regard to preserving the safety of the children that they were expecting to be subject to bombardment in the Blitz. And so they started a voluntary program of, dis of taking the children to displace them into the countryside. Some thought it was a good idea, some thought it wasn't, but they really were in a terrible bind. Well, these children were often taken to very loving and caring environments, not always, of course, but quite often. And they were followed up after the war for a great many years. Uh, it's been studied and published. The general fate of these children compared to, to others uh, within the British community has not been good. They suffered. Uh, they've had uh, consequences of uh, personal, emotional, family, and vocational di difficulties ever since. Not all of them, of course, but as a group. The Brits had very little choice in making this decision. It was done under great duress. We appear to have made this decision, and it's been done in our name as a, as a population, uh, without our consent and with, uh, without, without extreme duress. It seems to have been done thoughtlessly. What would you like to see happen now at our southern border regarding reuniting these children with their parents? And, and On the narrow level, it's essential that the children be returned to their parents as quickly as possible to try to mitigate the harm. In a larger sense, American immigration policy and management of, uh, and management of uh, refugees and asylum seekers has to be thought of in a, a compassionate, thoughtful way, based on facts, based on our nation's resources, and based on the national, the, or demonstrated national expertise 
in settling refugees. If you take a look, it's not just you and me that are the, the children or the grandchildren of refugees uh, desperately seeking escape from danger. Almost all of my friends, all the people I talk to, pretty much anybody you can speak of in the United States, they ended up here for that reason too. The only people that don't have a story like that are Native Americans and black Americans, all of whom have their own tragic stories about immigration, be it forced or forced upon them. Well, David Glosser, thank you so much for your insights. Uh, it is, uh, it's very good of you to speak out, and thanks for joining us today. And thank you. I appreciate it. It's important that we discuss these subjects soberly and thoughtfully. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.